Yes, thank you. Awesome. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for coming and spending a little bit of time to, to help uh, update this presentation. Uh, this is an older presentation from Jan King, um, and he had a, a team of people that helped him, and they presented it um, and had a workshop. And he's uh, been very generous with this time and is interested in um, uh, updating the, the presentation. Um, so, so we have a lot of help. Um, there's plenty to do. Uh, so I am going to share the screen and then show the, the slides and then walk through them so that everybody can see every page. Um, and I've started to make a few edits to it, but if you see anything that you have questions about or you have a an idea on how to change it or update it, um, then please just just speak up. Um, uh, sorry, can anybody hear me? This is Shamudra Hawk. I'm trying to figure out where I am and this am i broadcasting or no no oh, yeah i can hear you i don't see you um i don't see I you have... but i can i can hear you fine right okay so i'll have to rename myself because i think uh, uh well it's your time. yeah your sh yeah uh, okay yeah um, i see you now okay yes okay. You're there. I'll, I'll just uh, do it okay all right i'm gonna and uh, um, and uh michelle i just want to uh introduce thomas brosh uh who's on the line so maybe you just oh, give okay. him one second He's a he's a, a fellow colleague at Not Grumman Space Systems. Yeah, um, you but he's got a, yeah. Yeah, you, you uh, mentioned Tom. him before, and he's here. Tom, go ahead, please. Yeah, uh, I actually just graduated from UMD. I majored in aerospace engineering and with minor in computer engineering. Uh, so I have experience with electrical propulsion systems and uh, microprocessors, like especially the STM32 R processors, and then. Also done machine learning, uh, especially image processing and multi-channel SDR systems. So wow. yeah, plenty of good stuff. Well, thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, I've touched a lot. So <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for being here. And yeah, thank, I really appreciate thank you your for time. Having this. Yep, thank you. And then uh, hello to to Sumio. Uh, Sumio is a friend of ours, and uh, it's very good, very good to see you. And I hope that uh, hope that this is helpful and that you can give us some advice um, on on how, and some guidance. Okay, so I'll go ahead and start from the beginning. Get it back up on the screen. All right. Now, can you see slideshow? Okay. Is that good enough? Yes. Okay. Those, those are funky titles. I mean, you went back to the 1960s or 70s for ORI logo. Oh, uh -huh. Sorry. The okay. What we did is I just picked some images to to make the the first uh, slide uh, fun. Yeah. Um, so we we what we have here is a a mock up. This is to show um, the sort of the dimensions and what a six u six unit uh, cubesat looks like. This is the orientation that we're that we're expecting. This is the minimum size that we expect. Okay. Um, we don't think that that you can get it any smaller or should try. Um, you know, just just for all the redundancy and and for the debris mitigation and and orbit disposal stuff that we have to do, um, and so we expect that there will be other organizations that will help make this proposal great, and there they'll be on this page too. Um, the what we did is we talked about a, a name. Uh, I think this might have been Shamandra's suggestion for high flyer, Haifu Raiya. And that's just the proposal name. So this is the code name for our proposal work. So if when we present it and if it is uh, supported and selected, then um, Jamsat would then pick the all the names for the project. But this is just our uh, co code name. Uh, for the and, also, and, and also when it goes up, if it works, it'll be assigned an AO, um, it'll be send, uh, signed an Oscar number, O number. So maybe J-O something. So this is just, Kind of like a useful project name at this point. Yes, yeah. So that's our, that's just to organize our our work. Um, the next page that we have here, this is the mission objectives, and I've already made some edits to to this. Uh, originally, all of the mission objectives were demonstrations, technology demonstrations, and that was totally okay for 2014. However, we're we are now um, further along and. We think that we can say that we are we want to deploy 
a communications resource, that that is our goal, instead of demonstrating or, or doing something for the first time. Now, we can certainly do demonstrations, um, but what I started to do is kind of make it very clear that we want to provide a communications resource uh, at, at HEO. Uh, so that's, that's the first thing that I, I did. The things that are in red on this page are, are things that are a little bit different from our current work. So at, uh, at ORI, what we have, our baseline um, transponder work is a digital microwave system. And we go up on 5 gigahertz and down on 10 in the amateur radio bands. And Jan King's preference is a 24 gigahertz downlink and an uplink on 10 gigahertz. Now, what we do have is we do have a dual band feed for 24 and 10. So we already have at least that part for the ground station. Um, and we do have link budgets uh, for these bands. Um, this is also uh, some of Jan King's work. So we have a, a pretty extensive spreadsheet from him and uh, so, yeah, a lot because at 24 gigahertz, you have to worry about uh, weather. Uh, so humidity and, and weather uh, play a big role at 24 gigahertz. The rest of this is very similar. This is all stuff that uh, that we we have said over and over again. We we can we think we can handle about a uh, hundred simultaneous voice users. We think that's that would be uh, a good channelization for approximately 10 megahertz in the satellite allocation. And then the ones at the bottom were the proposed. Um, these are like proposed uh, payload missions. So they're in red because I have no idea where Vanderbilt University is with this work, if they've already been able to do it. Um, I started to look that up and got interrupted. But, you know, these things need to be carefully double checked. We can't assume that Vanderbilt would want to provide uh, or, or collaborate on a payload. So that's something that's a big action item in right, right there. Uh, but you can sort of see what the HEO spacecraft was including uh, radiation environment. I know that there's been some experiments at LEO from Vanderbilt for, for radiation environment. Uh, I'm not so sure about the propagation effects. That may have been for the 24 gigahertz mission. And there has been a 24 gigahertz um, amateur mission. It didn't do 24 gigahertz communications for amateur use, uh, but it was the uh, Husky Sat, I believe, had a commercial 24 gigahertz uh, transponder. Unfortunately, they no, they did not, as far as I can tell, did not release that design as open source. Okay, so the second page of the mission objectives, it, it goes on, and we have the uh, demonstration about the ability of a PPT propulsion system to carry out critical mission functions. Um, so these um, are two. I, I, I'd like to suggest something. Oh, go ahead. Are we, we going to wait until the end? Are we going uh, to the work? We can wait until the end. Um, uh, no, if, if you have something for this page, go ahead and say it, and, okay. and so I'll the, so take the, notes. So the, so the PPT is actually referring to older class of technology where um, there's a Teflon block uh, in uh, surrounded by two terminals. It's a very messy, uh, uh, it's not only a messy in EM, but it's also messy in contamination. PPT propulsion systems are known as earlier um, uh, technology, nobody wants to use them because they splatter quite a bit. And the whole uh, point of 30, 40 years of research post PPT is to make uh, quasi neutral plasma. PPT is ion, it's an ion drive. So basically, um, you fire it, uh, you're going to create splatter everywhere. It's going to be like uh, uh, try to make a cake and then, you know, putting on your mixer and forgetting that you, you'll splatter your whole kitchen. That's how bad it is. Okay, what, so, what should we put there instead? Uh, EP, electric propulsion system. Okay, so we'll change it to EP. Yeah. All right. What yeah. about the, so there's these, th this was, I guess, intended as a demonstration to carry out mission functions, perigee raising. It says perigee um, raising a GT, GTO, at, and then it says GTO. mission. Yeah. Okay, so okay, So that, that would be changed. Uh, yeah, that would be changed to three parts. Uh, it, it, would, it would be generally called um, uh, uh, perigee raising, semicolon, uh, uh, then or orbit uh, circularization, semicolon, and orbit adjustment. Okay, so orbit 
circularization. circularization. Sorry, it's going to be a big word. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, and a separately orbit adjustment. Uh, yeah. Like that? Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. So we 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 have so perigee raising uh, from parking uh, Leo parking, which means that when we're when we're uh, deployed, uh, wherever they drop us off, that's where we start from. So perigee yeah. raising from parking uh, from from deployment. Perigee uh, raising after deployment. Okay. So we'll need a couple of weeks to go higher. All right. The next um, bullet so, point. So if, oh, if, oh, sorry. If, go ahead. There's something sorry, else if in if the you section. Wanna, if you want to like. No, if you want to go back to that first bullet point, pressure raising to GTO, that's not uh, logical, correct? Because we may we may not be. We just want to be pressure raising after deployment, wherever we're ah. dropped off, whatever whatever the stage separation is, we'll be dropped off, and then we got to find our own way to yeah. Mars or something. Got it. <laughs> I, I was joking to I was joking to Tom that if we're lucky, uh, we'll we'll end up in the correct orbit. Otherwise, we'll head off to Mars, right, Tom? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There we go. There's a lag. I'm and, sorry. And if if you guys are makes watching mistake, me type. <laughs> if, if anybody makes it's a mistake, good. it's going to be on the decimal point. So we may end up, end up like, you know, yeah. I don't know, off by a few billion miles. <laughs> nah, yeah. that won't happen. Okay. So okay. let's, all right. I think that looks good. Are you satisfied with the first bullet point? Yeah. So um, if you really needed to be more specific to the naysayers, which are, no, a dozen nowadays. No, we will yeah. pay no attention to the naysayers. This will so, just, so, so, just focus so just on to... what we want to yeah. talk about and present. We're not going to be defensive or spend any time on on any sort of attacks or naysayers. Um, okay, so we'll let I, the work the that... work will speak for itself. Right. So I know the second paragraph is coming up, which is demonstrator laboratory. I, I want to use the word uh, low contamination electric propulsion. If we end up like splattering everything over the antenna, A, it's not going to work and B, we're never going to be able to do it. So it's low contamination. We need to target like, we can't, you know, splatter paint or right. paint as in plasma over the antenna elements. Cause that's the whole point of our mission. Okay. Should, I, should would it be easier to drop the second phrase here? Is this redundant? Yeah. Should, okay. All right. I'm just going to strike. For small yeah. sets, uh, reliability, demonstrate uh, increased. Well, we want to say increased because we already flowed. Flow. This was in 2017 ish, 2014 uh, ish. So, 2021, we're flying things. So, demonstrate. Uh, in, uh, remember, we talked about integration, communication, electric propulsion. So, in they're, they're together now. We have to, we have to say this demonstrate the uh, uh, compatibility of communication of broadband communications with low contamination. Yep, that's it. Compatibility. That's that's our, our hypothesis right there. Okay, so the compatibility of what kind of communication? Oh, broadband, broadband, broadband communications. Okay. Yep. This is ORI broadband. Because you're gonna get lots of megabits yeah. per second. Even but, hundreds. We should actually no, actually try but hundreds. I, I can almost guarantee that we will not get hundreds. We will we will be able to get you know, because because we just don't don't have the access to the to the bandwidth on these bands. So we have. Are you ten, a physical? Are you a physical layer person? I, I'm just. We have I'd rather ten, compress it with we software. Have, we have ten megahertz to play with, so it's not going to be hundreds of megabits. And okay. at that the distances we're talking about up at up at yeah. Heo, it could be, it, it we may not be able to get all of the the link that we that we want. Uh, so just be prepared. It, <laughs> it 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 counts as broadband and to some yeah, degree, yeah. We've, you know, I'll even put a asterisk there to, you know, cause, cause when you see the link budgets, you'll see that it's, you know, we our sub, our satellite sub band uh, is, is not. Constrained. You're saying we're going to be power constrained, not rather than gain constrained, right? On the link, the only. Um, I don't think we're going to be, it, it depends. Um, so, so in the past in similar designs, there's been some there have been times where it's been power constrained for various reasons. We don't have okay. some of those constraints, so we'll see. We, we are constrained is bandwidth constrained because we only have so much to work with uh, regulatory wise. So it's it's not yeah. a question. We could, we would love to have lots and lots of bandwidth, but at 10 gig, we have 10 megahertz to work with. So don't start thinking about hundreds of megabits per second. That is not feasible. Not unless we went up to some ridiculously high 
uh, you know, modulation index. High, no, oh, the, mod, uh, the uh, modulation wait, wait. index is not is not a factor here. If we went up to a okay. very very high frequency where we had a band un, essentially unlimited bandwidth, but we're not going to okay. do that. We're going to uh, stick to I, these sand uh, bands. Okay, uh, that's fine. So yeah. um, to raise the perigee, this to, has to uh, this has to be changed because the the guidance that we've got from the uh, yeah. from the FCC is. 1250 kilometers to stay above all plus, of the constellations plus plus, plus 1250 plus a 1250 kilometers plus I'm, I would suggest more than yeah yeah to how about 1250 kilometers or above and Is above that... no and to, to above to raise the perigee to above okay with the above, above. Bef before to raise the, the, above. the number yeah. instead of two to raise okay. the perigee above yeah okay I, yeah, whatever. yeah I think that's fair that's good Thanks. All right, and then what is this about to eliminate? Okay, to, is, this is to eliminate the spacecraft from orbit at end of life over a brief period of time. And then the example is less than a week from final burn. And uh, that is not going to happen because uh, a week, uh, when you're coming down that fast a week, everybody's gonna be up in arms and said, no, you can't do this because you, uh, if you come, I mean, they're gonna have to clear a lane for us and we can't just, just burn right. straight through. So just leave that one week alone. How about how about this? Like, <laughs> yeah, just... that's it. The end. Okay. Yeah, because I I agree with you. It's tricky. Or we send it. Or, or we send it into the sun, or the moon. Crash it on the moon. Fine. Everybody's dumping the earth. That's okay. Yeah. Or or yeah. Okay. And then I added this last one here because the the fact that this project is open source is a big deal, and that it does promote international goodwill. And it helps amateur technical education through this practice of design and development. So sharing. in the in the mission objectives one slide, if you just go back slightly, those two red things. Yeah, those were the Vanderbilt things right here. Well, maybe? those were the science those are the science payloads, basically. Correct. Yes. So why don't we just call it science payload? Just say science payload done. But and we just do not we, do, do we even uh, in order to get this I, how about we just delete it? Because I, I don't want to advertise a science payload that doesn't exist. Right, right. So and, and we're not, that we're not, we we're not providing that. We're not organizing right. the scientific yeah. payloads. We, we can just... add to it later. But if you keep Vanderbilt in here, then it's really a science payload that you're describing, which could have been obsolete by now because they flew radiation payloads anyway. So just call it science, science payload, a small science payload, SSP. Yeah, what I'm worried about is that if we put it into the mission objectives, that means that we own it. And I don't have, I don't think we have the bandwidth to, to put together or reach out well, or, uh, or how about a how science about payload on top of everything else. Well, how about a third party science payload? I mean, I'm saying somebody else make it. Optional third party science payload. We'll have space. If somebody meets our ICD, uh, then they fly. If they're not, we don't fly. We how just, about? Uh, it, Opportunity. Yeah. I don't know. I, maybe one of you has has a better way. Uh, of opportunity it. for a small science payload, or a small science payload in red. Yeah, let's keep it in red because I want to make sure that that wording is okay. Yeah. All right. So let's pause for for a minute and um, Asumio, uh, thank you so much for being here. Do you, is there anything that you see that that we should add or change? So far, uh, I, just have, I, I just have one quick, quick question. Um, oh, go, sure, go ahead. Wouldn't it be like relatively low cost and like low overhead to reuse like some scientific payload from an existing mission? Um, what do you guys think? Because integ integration is always difficult okay. no matter if you're reusing or designing it from scratch get it i yeah i i would i'm not against it whatsoever i mean get very excited about scientific payloads mm -hmm. and i think holding okay. the space for it and saying that we're there's, there's an opportunity here is good um but that's gonna i think that's a jam sat thing that that would be um, there and they have many relationships with the universities and and have a a, a wide variety of of you know, of op it, they'll be able to pick one that would be very appropriate for this. And so I, I want to stay out of that decision and just make sure that we um, do a good job of, of making a spacecraft that can support 
so I think having having it in here as the mission objective is good because we we really do have to keep keep in mind that uh, to get as much utility out of this as possible. I mean, Does that uh, sound they, okay? They, yeah, to me. Um, I'm just going to say, Michelle, that suppose that there was no science payload, and suppose that we eventually had a CTU and we found, you know, uh, uh, empty volume. Uh, we'll have to have minimum mass because they won't let us fly without minimum mass because we yeah, just I mean, can't go fly. So not, not too worried about that. <laughs> right. So so we so it, I mean um uh, I'm just curious if if in the future when we get to the stage if there is no science payload whether we could fill it up with some batteries or whatever and everything and then just go for high uh, high energy experiments. Yeah, I am not worried about filling up the space. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I good. So good point. All right, the next page here, uh, Jan included this to show. Yes. Because at the yes. time in 2014, it, these these missions were a long time in the past, and now they're kind of even longer in the in the past. Um, um, uh, so uh, we, this is for Tom. Uh, this is for Tom. Tom uh, uh, Thomas. Uh, this is actually stuff that's already been done in the 70s by citizen science and amateur radio operators, and they were very very advanced for their kind for their time. And we have all the designs for it, all of it. Most of well. it. Most of it, yeah. Yeah, we've got in in our repository, we have uh, at least one of the design books for the, one of the early Oscars, and and we have a variety of of, of designs. We I don't think we have complete designs for all of them, um, but the knowledge has been lost by people dying. Yeah, that's but they, but they that gave is, photographs. They gave yeah. photographs and, and the slideshows in yeah. those days. DOS based. That's true. We the, this so this this was a sort of a reminder a historical slide kind of show like you know hey we should we should get back to this we should and that is th that's still true. Um, so we may want to keep this in just for anybody watching it that uh, or viewing the presentation um, that isn't aware. So. Is, you think it's okay uh, to keep it in? And the in, and the infamous A O forty fifty three thousand yeah. by nine hundred kilometers orbit. Yes, uh, Thomas, that is right now. It's dead as a doornail, but it's up there at fifty three thousand by nine hundred kilometers. How about that? For free. All right, so let's go. Ahead, we'll go ahead and keep it in because it's it's. I think it's really good to show the designs from the past and um, and then uh, Sumio, if you have any other missions that you want to include. I mean, we may want to include QO100 and to, to say, you know, it's not just prior AMSAT HEO missions, but but higher altitude missions. Um, so so we can expand on on the history page. Um, and the way that the, the presentation is laid out, if you're in front of an audience that either already knows it or you need to cut out a few minutes, then then it's, it's something that you can skip over and, and, and stick with the technical content. So I'd I'd like to maybe even expand it with a little more with a background or definition uh, or diagrams for each one, but but then make it modular so that it's it's a uh, it's something that can be uh, skipped over if necessary. Okay, so the mission orbits are going to have to change, and I I think really it's all in red. This was the this was the desirable orbit at the time, and and you can see already that we still have the two hundred here. Or we have a 200 here for initial, and we have a 500 here for final. So that's that's num that's going to have to change. Um, we believe to 12 1250 plus, right? And then I think yeah. that that means that everything else changes. I'm I'm not an expert on or orbital mechanics. I know I know a little bit about GMAT, and can string together a script for you know, <laughs> but but. But this is that's that's really the limit of my knowledge on on orbits. Well, um, um, yeah, well, there is a um, there is a course uh, relation, course, not a fine relation, a course relation between where we want to go from where we're starting and how much delta v we will require to get there with the uh, orbit adjustments necessary at both ends. However, there is a uh, another angle to this, which is um, if we keep on going and not stop. If this is important, if we keep on going and not stop, the energy is there to go and make a big loop around deep space and come back. It is possible. We'll lose communication during that time. But if if the mission uh, planners know that we're going to come back, 
then we could switch to a different uh, low low bit rate mode uh, and it'll chug along it, it'll post it if we won't have to do anything we'll just send it out there and boom it'll just come back again like you know like a like a uh you know like a on a string so if if our assigned uh, altitude is 1250 that we have to be there that's that means that we're going to have to uh, circularize our burns and we're limited to there but if we if we really want to talk about this and we just go as as elliptical as we can and keep on going we're we're going to go halfway to the moon and come back no we're we're not going to go okay. we're not going to go halfway to the moon we're not doing any of that sort of thing i think we should stick to uh like a heo orbit okay. and provide right. communications resource so we we can talk about deep space uh because we do have some some cool stuff we we do we have a uh, open source implementation of polar codes which achieve um you know those are those are really good codes they achieve the physical limit and and we really could play around with some deep space uh stuff um, on a, on a later mission. An, that, that's, on a, later that's mission, a that. different thing we are not going to do anything exotic or weird with this orbit okay. what we do need to do is is to stay up and away from all of the um many or, or several and and growing uh, uh constellations and formations um you know 12 below 1250 so i know that that uh, jan king did some orbit work here so he was able to get some some new numbers and that was in our debris mitigation um our minimum viable product presentation to the fcc in october of 2021 and yeah. that i th i think his he he came up with some delta v numbers and i i, I will make sure that i I get them at those at least in here. Um, so some work has been done, but he he did recommend that we get someone that really knew what they were doing to go look at it. And so I think some of the like the inclination we're really we really will accept pretty much anything that lets us use this for communications. We're really you know we we will be looking for whatever opportunity we can we can go for. In the so the um, the pro but just one second, the presentation from, from October, the past October, um, it was, if we could get three of these, then we could have global coverage. Three or four would be awesome. Now that makes it three or four more times ex expensive, uh, but that that's where Jan King, this is where he was going um, this year. And, and so when we look at this, this is just one spacecraft, but what we will be putting in here is the, the possibility that we, if we if we can get uh, three for three times the cost, then we should go ahead and do our very best to to put up a um, a fleet or, or uh, to to answer the uh, little question by Sumio, I'm going to say that um, I've done this kind of calculation before because uh, I'm the engine designer, so I had to do lots of model. I'm going to say this: if our target for mission success is 1250 kilometers, it doesn't make sense to be dropped off at gto all the way up there and then come back down we might as well take the second stage separation be deployed in in a, a low ish earth orbit and then spiral out to 1250 kilometers economically however if the uh, launch provider doesn't agree with that uh with that dropping off saying that no we've got 20 other things to drop off we're going to drop you off at say 8,000 20,000 or whatever kilometers then we're going to have to just swing down the swing and twist all the way down so the delta v would have to be probably recalculated for a couple of use cases now I, I'm open to what the uses are but I need a little bit of uh double check in the math but it can be done such that we can assume, for example, and I, I, I'm just guessing out here because of the, this is the only first week I'm thinking about this, but Japan and Australia happen to be, I believe, strongly uh, 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 symmetric around the equator. Is that correct? Uh, does anybody know the, the, altitude, the latitude south of Australia? average and the latitude north of uh, Japan average. Is that not the same from the map? Does that in affect the apogee? Well, in which case, the fact is that when we are going to place our uh, 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 spacecraft in orbit, uh, we really want to have an inclination uh, uh, you know, approach 
that basically allows us to cover both. See, the the, the globe oh, is this. Yeah. Okay, so let's so let's just here. so that we so that we can tag it and and bag it. Let's mark this in red too, because I yeah. think this initial mission, since it was for, for AMSAT NA, sounds like it was yeah. assuming. Uh, an yeah, inclination that was got yeah, it. Okay, so yeah, exactly. yeah, let's so let's let's say we we've, we've got it marked and we know that we are going to have to redo this uh, and to be uh, Japan centric about it and and that that's so, what we, so that we the, can do. The, uh, I mean, I don't know if we can ever get Mitsubishi to launch us, but they, they, they there's an advantage to get they're going up on from Japan rather than going that's up right. from twenty eight point five, which is Cape Kennedy. That's and that's something that that I think Jamsat will take the lead on if they approve the if they like the proposal then that's yeah, that's going to be we on have them. to do so, I, I, we need to do a, we need to do a workup uh, we that's do. the map that we, we we're aerospace engineers we'll we'll plug in the numbers into our Excel spreadsheet yes. and we'll generate some use cases like if we went up from right. I don't know Japan if we went up right. from the new Australia <laughs> I mean yeah, Jan we'll, King lives in Australia doesn't he he does now that's true okay well then yeah, he gets so, to fly. Anyway, good, good spotting, uh, good catch, and and yes, we'll work up. We'll probably need have this will probably expand out into several pages, because yeah. there's at least there's there's several ways to do this. So yeah, all, all of the all of those use cases will result in a range of delta v, and then the magic becomes is that okay, we need that delta v. How mm -hmm. in the world are we going to get delta v? And right. I, I I know the answer to this already. It, small engines. Cluster together, fire when you need them to, and otherwise keep quiet. That's it. Okay. Let's see. Greater the. I'm yeah, sorry. Yes. Uh, yes. Thing? Sumio, that's right. Sumio said, I think the greater the orbital inclination, the more launch energy is required. And that may be true. And we will, we will make it, uh, we'll make it come out in the math. Um, um, Sumio, um, I, I, I designed a lot of the, the whatever, the early uh, math around, uh, Scalable small spacecraft micropropulsion. I am confident that uh, if we cascade some of the uh, thrusters together to fire only when required, all in synchronization, we can beat any link budget. It's it's a new technique. I kind of pioneered it, so I'd love to like you know, actually do the math again and and just just do it. It'll be like a class of of uh, orbit maneuvers. Uh, be, so you, you that'll be one yeah. of the things that we include. All right, so let's yeah. talk about the physical size. We, I think that it's fair to say six uh, U, uh, and if for some reason that we need it to be larger, then we'll make it larger. But I don't, I don't think it can be any smaller than six U. I think we're going to need all of that volume to make it reliable because of the 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 greater burden upon us compared to the past um, in terms of debris mitigation and and you know expecting to to dispose and to to be uh reliable and all that so i'm going to keep it it's i mean i'm keeping it at 6 u i know we already went over this a little bit but like when we start talking about the physical size here it says there's three standards that exist is this still true this was definitely no, true no 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 it, it's it's okay. gone bigger they're not 36 u okay so can we strike this three standards yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so we have, and, is this and, and accurate? Is this still okay. accurate? Because yeah, they look funny to me. I, I, and I did not run the numbers to see if this matches up with what um, we could. Uh, just say 6U clip set form factor uh, 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 compliant to CDS spec, CDS 2022, uh, uh, clip set design standard. Just up there. So, so. Compliant. Yes. Yeah, this is this is reflecting somebody's idea of a cube set, but actually we should follow the uh, official uh, CDS document. Okay, so let me. All right, so it says down here that the, at the time the dimensions were provided by Innovative Solutions in yeah, Space. Yeah, they they they've given up. Uh, they've now had to comply with the cube set design spec. Okay, so and all the launchers are CDS. Yeah, I'll, I'll, if you allow me, I, I know what, uh, what to do with the CDS, exactly okay. precision CDS metrology. Okay. Yeah. We'll just, I'll just put this in red because it's a, it's an action item. Uh, and, and then the mass, it says up to 12 kilograms mass. Does that sound reasonable? Does this no, need to change? No, 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 it can be higher. It can be higher. It's, it, those are older, older assumptions. 
Okay. Do you, off the top of your head, does anybody here have a? It's a, it's a 1.1, so it will be uh, eventually 1.1 uh, kilograms per average year. So, you know, six something kilograms. It's not 12 kilograms by any means. It's not two kilograms per year. It can't be. So it's going to be 1.1. So I would say, uh, again, following CDS standard, the, C the CDS standard, uh, uh, certain classes of CDS standard uh, allow for a lower and higher mass payloads. The, the reason is that the solar panels, suppose that you have a space car where, where um, you know, some the solar panels, which I would like to have, your plumb, to be honest, is not going to be that big. So why don't we just get a, a meter square of uh, solar panels folded or two meters square? We got that means two kilowatts. Yeah, we're that'll be the very next slide. Okay, so is okay, right. And your audio is a little weird sounding, so make sure you're next yeah. to your microphone. It was yeah, just a little just the, a, oh that's better. That's the, much better. Yeah, it was just a, a laptop, little a super laptop. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. yeah. It was just a little getting a little bit um a jittery there. So I just want to make sure that everyone can hear you clearly. So is it okay to say up to 1.1 oops kilograms per per you? Is that what I is that what I yeah. understood? You estimated, to say? estimated, estimated up to 1.1 kilograms per you estimated. Okay, so that's our good guideline. Yeah. I'm referring to CubeSat design spec by the way, specification. Yeah. It's a it's a book. Well right. it's a manual. Correct. Okay. So I think that's good for that page for now. Um, there's going to there's going to be a lot more work for every page, but I think this is a good update for. for um, uh, uh, Thomas, uh, did you study CubeSat stuff in school? Uh, we did a little bit of that, um, but not much. What about? Yeah, I mean, essentially, uh, it, uh, the original documentation that I'm reading, which is, it, it has been slightly modified, but it's one kilogram per average U. So the question is, you know, there are exceptions to this because everybody wants to put something or other, but it, it, it comes as a result of the modeling that happens, like the rails. You can, you can save some, uh, you can save some, uh, weight if you don't use solid rails. Trust me, you don't need it. It's it's in the spec. You don't need all the rails to be 100% there. It can be just, you know, structurally supported uh, internally, but the only the corner, the six corners, well, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight corners are important. And a little bit of the middle. Okay, so this this page shows at the time. So again, this is the 2014 proposed configuration. And you can see it's showing the panels and a yeah. solar array drive mechanism and it's showing a 10 gigahertz horn a 24 gigahertz horn so those are our two uh your uplink and a downlink bands so those are the main ones but it also has you can see a 435 megahertz omni antenna a 1269 megahertz omni antenna and a 1.27 gigahertz patch antenna so there's there was um ideas to kind of put put a number of um, of communication resources on this. So so I thought that was that was pretty interesting. The the main ones are the two horns. Uh, so you can sort of see what the proposed layout um, is. Um, so I think that so, I, let's not, I'm, I'm, so I'm not, I don't want to talk about the antennas because the antennas are probably going to be there that's what they're probably going to look like. These are actually still this is what people use and and it's totally fine to hold there. What we really should talk about on this page is the solar arrays because I think there's been some, like, but correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there's been some advancements in solar space based solar arrays, like, and and that these numbers for the wattage and and that who designs them um, probably has changed. Well. Um... Uh, it, 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 I'd, I'd love to re, re, rework this. Uh, I'd like to you know, basically collaborate with other people to rework this because here the gears shown basically require the panel to be unfolded from both sides and rotate on both sides. I mean, theoretically, that's age old way of doing things, but nowadays you can severely think of like yeah, it, come, it a comes three out. Part or four part yeah. yeah, it comes out differently. And when we when we have drawn things for our for what we would want as a transponder project, that we draw them from the long 
So the yeah. long rails that you see like on the top. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. that they end up folding out. And I think that's pretty standard now. So right, I think right. at the very- and, and you only have one hinge and you only have one rotating axis to rotate the whole panel. You know, all the yeah. three segments, four segments. Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna write Let's... this down over here because yeah. I, there isn't any way for me to edit this drawing. Um, mm -hmm. But like a side deploying single hinge and any other notes that would help us? Uh, several, several, several panels, several panels. So we're talking about. Uh, yeah, at panels. least like one on either side is what I've seen. Like, and there's several well, panels actually, in each actually, in each wing. You won't actually be requiring the whole volume anyway, so you might as well get six or seven panels and be be done okay. with it. And because they'll, they'll 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 get ruined over time, so yes. you might as well get them as well. Okay. Any any other words? We need stabilization, by the way, because if your antennas need to be uh, always pointing to Earth, then we That's need right. to figure out. Um, we need to figure out whether we're going to have well, then well, the, the propulsion. Where did they put the propulsion system in this design? We can skip ahead to propulsion if you no, want. No, no, where did they say that the propulsion system would be? Well, here's the internal volume. This is the very next slide. This was. The, this was the internal volume yeah, allocation yeah, in 2014. Yeah. So you can see yeah. here's here's your patch, the, the one yeah, gig patch array. I here's would, where the horns I actually, were. I would actually say that since I designed the goddamn thing, uh, those PPTs or microcat, whatever, that's my stuff. I would place them on pop outs uh, out of the body, not directly to the antenna because they, they're going to destroy they're going to destroy EM communications in that in that area. Okay, no, no, no I'm having I'm having trouble hearing you again because I think you're too far away from the microphone. Okay, sorry. All right, I would I will propose that the, the the thrusters not be located near the active antennas ever. Right. Okay. I mean, we can write that down. I think that that makes sense to me. Not being a yeah. I'm not a mechanical yeah. engineer. Um, oops. Wow. Check what I did. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this oops. is DOS based graphics here. <laughs> I did not mean to do that. Sorry. Oh, I see now. Okay, so when I moved it, it, it now brings it to my attention that the PPT is right. They are right by. Okay, so that's yeah, all right. That's so the let's wrong just... place to be. Yeah, the, you you need to. Yeah. we'll just say re re, re reposition things or yeah, rearrange yeah. them. Um, spacecraft internal volume. Okay, and I'm just gonna say no engines near antennas. Near palms. Yeah, yeah, or near comps. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so we'll we're gonna have to um, yeah, <laughs> see, <laughs> we will we will have and, to and no, and and please everybody ask me how I came to that conclusion when I get called and say it doesn't no no work. no 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 we we know <laughs> okay so this is now this is a big a big drawing okay so this is the functional block diagram for the communications part I believe but it also okay it also includes I don't know if you can see my my cursor or not, um, but I am in, in the lower left, the lowest yeah, we left. Can see it. We can see it. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. So, all right. So the what I'm circling here is this lithium ion battery, and there is actually a um, a battery configuration mismatch between slide 11, which is what we're now on, and slide 13. They do not match. So that is something that uh, that we should we should fix. And also, I can. I assume that we're going to be updating our, our battery capacity. Um, I'm 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 expecting that the, in eight years that we would revisit this and and that's a lot of maybe the power um, power distribution might might need to change. You can see here's the two panels um, and the that configuration changes and that causes a cascade of change. So the, essentially, I think this entire thing will be um, the kind of the heart of the presentation is this functional block diagram. And the next slide, it goes into the power subsystem. Okay. So there this original presentation does not have a breakdown of each of the of each of these blocks or each of these sections. So it kept it at a pretty high level. We may want to we, we will be be going into a lot more detail about the functional block diagram. So some of this stuff changes, especially if we decide that we're going to go with five and ten gigahertz rather than 24 and 10. Um, some of the R, I don't, this, some of the RF stuff is probably going to have to change, but so, and then you can see that there are the two experiments I think are included in here. Now we have a, uh, an, an architecture that we've, we've gotten pretty far along with, 
And what it does is it makes it much more modular to add in um, secondary payloads or, or scientific payloads. Um, so when I when I edit this up and and send it out, what I'll do is I'll provide you a link to the architecture that we have for the transponder that we've been working on. And I think that we will um, fold them together. So we'll take everything that we can from here uh, because our architecture is only the communications. And then we'll we'll figure out uh, how to make an even a, a complete functional block diagram. And we will also probably do a lot of, do several breakouts that show more detail for some of this stuff. Um, if I if I could just request you, Michelle, I've just sent you on your Slack channel direct message a photograph of uh, something that I've been working on with my uh, colleague. Um, it's a it's a test array of super cap cells, but the result is fifty six. Um, Farads, not microfarads, 56 farads at 12 volt, uh, you know, continuous uh, you know, operation. I mean, that we can draw on it for a few more than a, a little bit of time. I'm just curious if you, if that photograph, you have it. Yeah, because, I'm, looking, I'm looking at it. Right. So I'm just saying that other than your, uh, uh, meta, um, other than your uh, solid batteries or, you know, other than your primary batteries, no. Primary batteries are not rechargeable, but secondary batteries are rechargeable. So therefore, uh, for my, uh, for any electric prop stuff, we can actually get a lot of high intensity energy charge and discharge cycles by using super caps, which are lighter and they, they're, they're, they're a tertiary energy source. Okay. I, I mean, it's really convenient because these technology, this technology did not exist 10, 10 15 years ago and nobody knew what, about it. So now we don't. So right. I'm just saying that, so. I'm gonna add it know. as a note here, okay? Yeah, please. Well, actually let's let's add it on the next page because the next page is the power subsystem that okay. probably, yeah, here we go. Okay, so is there, this is, I, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here, but I'm thinking the whole thing turn, turns red because the entire power subsystem needs to be reviewed and yeah and updated is there, is there I, I anything mean, here that's is there anything here that you would keep that's 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 stated correctly or accurately it's probably from somebody's specification but it's everything's changed everything's become a bit more convenient to okay. engineer out all right so let's just go ahead and do that and like five volts nobody uses five volts nobody uses 12 and 20 right. volts it's all on 3.3 yeah that, that actually was what i was going to ask you all because i i i know enough to know that the voltages didn't look like what I've seen on, on other recent. I mean, we could stick to 28 and be uh, uh, compatible with the Russians and the Americans. Yeah, and I'll put in super caps with a question mark so we don't forget. Yeah. I mean, I know you won't forget, but you know. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I mean, uh, and uh, compatibility with 28. See, uh, I know AMSAT uh, supplied stuff to the ISS. They had. They all agreed that um, 28 volt DC also Cygnus. Uh, yeah. Not to come on, is it 28 volts? Uh, yeah. Russians okay. are 28 volts, whatever. With, you know. Oh, so let's, instead of ISS, which is what I printed, so I'm going to say compatibility with 28 volts, question mark. Yeah. Okay. Everything is 28 volts, usually. So do you think why. it's not really a question? Do you think it's more of a statement? It sounds like it's um, not really a question. It sounds like 28 volts is the way to go. 28 volts is 28 volts. You could call it, I mean, it, it's 28 volts is 28 volts. That's it. Everybody else is 28 volts. Oh, you can get parts and everything for 28 volts and connectors for 28 okay, volts. Okay, so, I mean, what it, it's it's nice for me to be able to turn a red into a, a white. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So let's yeah. let's just go ahead and say that we're going to, we're that, that oh, makes um, sense, it, right? Just add the word dirty power, 28 volt dirty power, because we're going to have lots of uh, spikes, lots yeah. of spikes. Yeah. Yes, dirty power. All right, there we go. All right, the next slide is talking about, okay, so this is, I think we just strike this slide because we, we know that we're, that we're gonna have to change. This was just, this was at the time, yeah. this was the, the panels that were chosen for the presentation. And I'm just gonna say this whole thing is, is red. Okay, so we'll, it's just like the power. I mean, it's, articulating, it's, articulating panels have come a long way. We know that there, there are methods to articulate panels. We may have to get the gears, but it yeah. can be done. You know, okay. okay. All right. And then we have a power budget. Okay. So this oh. is actually a, is this power power? Yes, this is watts. Okay. So we have a power budget. And again, the, this is the, the cascade effect of our power subsystem is going to change. 
So yeah. and uh, can I just uh, can I just ask you that PPT? How much did he assume the in watts? Four watts, I believe, right? And the Let's and, uh, see. the p experiment. Well, there's an experiment payment, yeah. payload yeah. that's the payload. PPT four watts. Yeah. With uh, and then 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 the two other, the two At other 10, experiments okay. had, had interesting, a... interesting. I I do recall giving that presentation. So he copied. I mean, he used what I was talking about. I mean, at the small set conference, it was like 10 pulses per second, 10 PPS. So he was already thinking of like, we need yeah. to up the uh, firing rate. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, okay. the glad, I'm, I'm glad to say that uh, it's not four watts, it's 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 less. It's, it, it could be much less. It could be one watt. One watt for 10 PPS there. Okay. Beyond. Yeah, and I think this is, an, it, this is an image, so I can't do much except yeah. Go over here to power budget and say yeah, we'll be more efficient. <laughs> we'll be more efficient. We'll be more efficient. Okay. Yeah, I, I think that, that that sounds sounds good to me. But so I'm not I mean you notice that I'm not deleting any slides because they're they're ex it's an excellent flow. So we will update this. Um all right. And next is called structure design. And I when I read through this, this looked like mechanical design to me. Um and these are the assumptions at the time that it was volume limited and not mass limited. That seems to have changed um, based on what we talked about earlier with it going from 10 kilograms per U to 1.1. So yeah. I don't think that we can say this uh, anymore, that it might not be, you know, that this might, that I'm gonna put this in red because this might not be true anymore. Um, in fact, the whole thing, we'll just make it red. Yeah, we'll have to think about this for a second. That uh, if we really want to have an enclosed structure to protect the avionics, my question would be, why have a sh big shell to protect little avionics because things have become smaller than having little shells in an otherwise empty frame? So we just have like rails. We have an open structure. We just fly up there, uh, but we basically enclose the avionics in a in a smallish shell because we don't really need that much unless you want to like big have huge uh vacuum tubes in in the system yeah um okay so it sounds like this whole it sounds like this but, is but my my experience i mean in selecting avionics parts is limited to electric prop and command control and data handling so maybe other persons can also you know suggest that we don't need a big shell there's no point in it. I mean, it's just going to carry a lot of mass up yeah. there. Whereas we could just say, hey, look, let's use it for battery power or, you know, fuel tanks or something. Okay, so this approach has changed. Uh, I know enough from like, from looking at spacecraft that have, over the past 10 years, especially, and like when JPL has an open house and I got, you know, I got to see the engineering model um, of the little CubeSats that went to, to Mars and did the relay. And yeah. the things that you're saying are things that I'm seeing and that, you know, so I'm just going to say, put it in red and I'm going to say this, this approach has changed. Um, the rest of this stuff will, will change um, to, for, for, sure. up, you okay. know, the updated structure design. Is so this do we have still to, true, then have this part here? Can, do we have to then have some mechanical teams? Uh, oh work yeah, with us? absolutely. Okay. And that's, that's actually uh, thermal. We are, I don't know, we might even be better at thermal than mechanical, but we have always assumed um, for, for our uh, microwave transponder that we would that we would purchase or 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 that someone else that knows how to build the mechanical part of the spacecraft would um, you know would that we that we would need to add that resource, that we would need to have those people added to to ORI because we don't have anybody that has enough experience and or time to to do it uh, for this proposal though we have to find people that that can advise us or we have to find a um a suitable essentially a suitable frame or a suitable structure uh, that we can purchase um, now just guessing in the entire rest of the slide no mention of radiation protection right i think there is later on okay and that is actually something that we've talked about when we did, we've done mission planning and when we went and talked to the FCC about debris mitigation is that if you, yeah. if you spiral up and spend a lot of time tooling yeah. along, then you're going to get pummeled by radiation way more than if you just get 
a good launch and pay, and just pay to be transported up higher. And right. that, that second option is, <laughs> has won out every time because when you look at the amount uh, of radiation that you have to endure, then your capabilities have to go down because you have to add so much to mitigate the, the radiation. It's just classic. Uh, well, um, I, I'd like to just uh, um, inform you that I was reading just a paper just a few minutes ago, um, work related. And apparently the structures that house the spacecraft, you know, avionics, once they're bombarded with the ionizing radiation, they end up creating more particles, which actually end up creating havoc inside of the avionics, you know, chips, the fabrics and everything. So if yeah. we had a sort of like a bare bones naked cell, we actually might be lucky enough. I mean, I'm just predicting because I was reading their comments that, hey, uh, if you want everything enclosed, then you're going to get tons of more radiation than you would if it was as bad. So, I mean, I really need to talk to somebody smart. Yeah, quickly. Yeah, but I bet you they would agree with that because the comments are from these people who are always launching stuff all the time. And I think, uh, what's it? Uh, 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 New Mexico, University of New Mexico did this where they flew a uh, kind of like a bare naked uh, bus platform and they only shielded their uh, critical parts. That's it. The end. Was it a, was it a HEO? Yeah, it was military, military ops, so uh, above 600 to 2000. Okay. All right. Anything else on this page? I mean, there, the, the vibe testing and the, that spanning the interior volume to, to make uh, stiffness uh, uh, is... uh, Apparently, I've been told uh, from my own manager that optical cabling actually degrades in space too much. So copper cabling is what it is. I mean, in, in terms of avionics, that's why they do it. Optical apparently doesn't survive. I, I was sad at hearing that. Okay. I mean, Any, you know, anything, I, else, I, anything else on this page before we move on? No, no. Okay. All right. All right, so here is a, so you notice that says, this is structure design page one. Okay, and then structure design page two. So again, this is gonna change, but you can see the folding and the hinges on this particular one um, and it's from MMA. So I, this is, I'm gonna mark it in red. So that's that's gonna change. Two for the price of one frame. I don't understand that. Okay. They probably got a right. deal. Oh. You know, or, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't guess, but, but, uh, I, I it, either they got a deal, uh, they have two for the price of one, or that this arrangement was, was innovative in some way. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. It's here's the mass budget. And since we, it's, this is from 2014. So it's, it's going to be, it's going to have to be revised completely. Did did anybody was this a situation where people would just buy the reaction wheels from somewhere? Is that the the well, source of the reaction? Yeah. That's a good, I believe so. Okay. Did we see any hint here of that? It just says reaction wheels. And yeah, it just says certain... reaction wheels, and it but it has these oddly specific yeah. kilograms. So I right. I would and it and it calls out if it doesn't call out the company. Um, but I'm, it, it doesn't look like guesses to me. It looks like it came off um, of a, you know. Yeah, so it's not I, homemade. I mean, they, they have to, I mean, we, if, if that's keeping the attitude, yeah. uh, you know, then we, we better talk to somebody who buys this stuff and it works yeah. because it, if we make it ourselves, that's not going to work. Yeah. I enjoyed this page. Um, I'm not sure if there was text here, but, but this is, this is thermal design. And there is no notes. And thermal design is one of the areas that we are pretty weak. We did uh, get a a, disc, a nice discount on uh, the software called Thermal Desktop. And we had a volunteer who learned how to use it um, back when we were working towards uh, the Airx project. And they they didn't have any thermal people. So we we picked it up and, and tried to learn how to use it. And we we didn't get that far because we, we had, you know, fairly basic, simple stuff to to test, and 
you know, until you get your design done, you're, you're, you know, you, you have to have something to test and something to model. And that's as far as we got. So we, I don't think that we have any, uh, we don't have good capability here. I really hope Jamsat has some people here. Uh, and what I'll do after this, after we've run through these at this particular session is write the stuff down that we are most in need of and see uh, if we can, and also the, the other organizations that are helping us will reach out um, and ask, if, ask if them. If we're floating around at 1200 kilometers, we're going to be having a period of certain time. So we're going to be actually in different, uh, we're going to be in shadow, we're going to be in light and so on and so forth. And we're going to face a uh, thermal cycling. Mm -hmm. So right. it is important for us. Oh yeah. To, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not sure if there was anything here in the original presentation and it's been lost or was removed. Right. But the thermal design page is blank, and I don't have anything to add to it other than we we need um, some people that that are that are good at this to check it. Okay, now comes the attitude control system. Here's what we had at the time specified and or proposed. It was three axis attitude control system, and I'm not the say driven by yeah the accuracy and knowledge. So so we have some results here and and with notes that they're driven by the antenna beam so so these things i don't believe have changed you, you're the beam width of the antenna is a, a function of the the frequency and the type of antenna you're using um now they're talking about the solar array drive requirements here this y plus or minus five degrees uh since we are we're going to go with a different so, solar array type that's that's going to be different um that you can see what we're kind of dealing with you know the oops hang on we're not done yet uh there's this nadir pointing mode there's a safe hold mode there's a point on earth target tracking mode maintain solar area axis so these are things that you're that people are going to have to tell me if they're still some of them i'm familiar with and some of them i'm not I, i'm not an uh, attitude control system expert I know enough to be dangerous, um, but is there anything here that we are missing or anything here that we can strike? Um, this is all assuming the spacecraft is operating by itself with no um, no beacon. I mean, it's not receiving any beacon like a GPS, you know, um, well, okay. I mean, here, accuracy knowledge, I, I need to control, I mean, I'm wondering why they didn't consider like, well, there's an available beacon that's coming from outer, you know, from above orbit, and you know, that's an additional input to the system that we know where where zenith is, or you know, where the outer ring of satellites are, because okay. the GPS satellites will be above that, not at 1200. They won't be. They'll be in any old. So we always get the beacons. Okay, so I think it sounds like we really we need some help here. Yes, this is to me all of this is this assumes that it's operating on its own independently without any any outside help so yeah. let's see if let's see if there's anything here okay so here's more attitude control system components aha okay so here's where we have this is where it's they were coming in. from so they were purchased three reaction wheels yeah, purchased from Canyon, sinclair planetary blue Canyon might not sell for cheap sinclair is this yeah. around who knows it didn't I, it would be the it would be this or this is giving you an idea about what what it was yeah. at the time and then we would get the the, the current you know uh, type of thing if if this is the yeah. design that we that we want um, I don't see why not this okay so so it names out all the different companies and the torque coils embedded in spacecraft walls and the momentum dumping dumping okay so and there's actual photographs of of products that's cool. Okay, so that's a little bit better specified than the than the intro. Um, I'm I'm sure. still a little queasy about all this because I'm I'm like, do we is this a full list of the requirements or or not? And I don't know, but I think we have people we do have people that can help us with attitude control systems, and there is uh, at at least one um, open source attitude control system uh, from Libre Space Foundation, so we can get yeah, we could, some help we could, from uh... them. They might already have drivers for certain products already. You know, where where we where 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 we can get the telemetry or I'm or losing the, losing your audio again. Sorry. Uh, I mean, what I'm trying to say is that they might 
already have built-in interface uh, for for the various hardware. I mean, we don't have to yeah. reinvent right. the wheel. We can just yeah. say, okay, whatever they use, we can use. Just yeah. follow the design. So update, update the components is what we need to do. And I'll put that in red as a, that's what we need to do. Not too bad. All right. And then there's a third page and a fourth page on, on attitude control systems because it's important. So here is a close up. Remember that functional block diagram from earlier? This is close up showing where, where the reaction wheels and the magnetometer and the star tracker, et cetera, and the torque, uh, torque coils, where they are located in the functional block diagram and, what, and how um, are they controlled I, I'd like and to what update, the interface is. We need to update this to add desaturation by EP electric propulsion. The electric propulsion systems, when they're not doing orbit adjustment or orbit control, will actually be used to desaturate the reaction wheels. Okay, so I'll put that. But otherwise, you're going to be, first of all, you don't want to run reaction wheels all the time, but if you have to, because you're maintaining your, uh, you know, bore site, um, you will end up like actually saturating them and they won't be able to do control. So you fire against them by EP. Okay. All right. So I've got that there. The fourth page of the attitude control system. Oh, okay. So this looks like a state diagram for all those different modes. That makes me a little, that makes me much happier. Okay. So this is. All right. This is, this is going to need to be reviewed, but this is. Yeah. This is nice to have to see what where, where the thinking was for the for the state diagram. I don't know if the current state diagram assumptions um, are different. Here, please let's add a GPS uh, lock. Um, so in those days, uh, you know, it wasn't considered, but now it's very practical to have a little GPS receiver um, to give us at least a course direction. Yeah. Like where 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 we are in GPS territory. All right. All right, next is the flight computer. And this is probably gonna change because um, we we have we have a, um, a variety of options and we also, our baseline is the Virago um, chip or Virago uh, flight computer. And they have an M4. So I th think this will change, but it's, it's essentially, it's going to be, it's going to be a similar type of, of computer. Um, it should have more capability, but it won't be this one, but it'll be an updated one and it will have lots of, lots of heritage, especially if we go with something like the, the Virago. Okay. All right. Primary experiment was the regenerative transponder that could that's a lot of this actually stays the same. We do need to make a decision about the about the actual uh, the frequencies that we're using. Is it yeah. going to be five and ten, or is it going to be ten and twenty four? But this makes a good uplink band, uh, according to Jan. We've always used it, always assumed it as our downlink band for five and dime right. or five and ten. Um, and then he talks about twenty four. It's not used very much. Makes a good downlink band. It's it's nearly on the first water absorption line. So he he makes this remark here, and and Jan has a, a substantial amount of work in the in his uh, link budgets that that model that use the um, weather modeling, so that you you can put in where you your ground station is, and it will it will tell you how kind of bad it is throughout the year. So theoretically, is the first water absorption line since atmosphere is full of water? Do we have do we have issues in transmitting from Earth or transmitting to Earth, or it's is it just, both ways? It's just both ways. It's it's the your your it, your energy from your the, the radio frequency energy is absorbed, stopped by water in the air. So this is rain fade is is yeah. one way to look at it. This is sort of humidity fade or cloud fade or you know, and it's a it's a factor for for twenty four gigahertz. So it it does make transmitting on this frequency very interesting because it's like sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and and you can actually see the weather especially if it's um which you know the, the way that we do the communications um it's a 
it's a loop. It's a closed loop. So so what we we use is adaptive uh, coding and modulation. So depending on the signal to noise ratio of your link, you get more coding or more modulation in order to to maintain or to 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 get you the most bits through as possible. And that is something that you will see on 24 gigahertz a lot more than some other bands. So I think this points an excellent one at the bottom. And you know that this. Um, I'm going to even add the whole a, a, a completely new point about um, you know 24 gigahertz would allow us to show off uh, adaptive coding and modulation or showcase. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to actually um, refer to something that I used to do when I was a VSAP network operator. There are there are rain fade that happens when the cloud that the rain is coming from is shallow on the horizon or, or at a shallow angle you know the, the, then we know that there's some, uh, there's some um, uh, significant artifacts that happen in the signal but if it's above us like if the cloud comes above us then we get into like really i mean we get two different modes of operating one goes through and one doesn't go through i mean that's why i would love to experiment with it that you know if we if we have the satellite low on the horizon when we're doing the rain or handling moisture, what does it do versus when it's straight overhead? Yeah. Okay. There's all okay. sorts of fun things to do at 24 gigahertz, and that's that's a I think it's well worth talking about and, sure. and letting letting people play. Okay, so for here, the contention based FDMA is uh, that's not the way that we do the uplink. Uh, you're you have authentication and authorization, and or uh, it could back, we could back off all the way to contention based FDMA, but or random. But uh, we have something um, a little more sophisticated that we have uh, designed. So so I, this is not this this may be like a like a fail over mode, <laughs> but that's not how how we're going to do it. A hundred users we keep. That's that sounds right. Um, I think this was randomly probably meant to be randomly. Uh, users select frequency randomly. It's actually the payload that selects for you. So, or in, or, or it might be your, your radio. I don't know. Yeah. So uh, it, I'm just going to flag paragraph, that because it's not, yeah. you know, then yeah, conflicted users retry. So all this, this is fine. This is, it actually works, but we, we have a, a different way of doing it. The user transmit two Watts. That's going to be that's going to be well, well, correct uh, for, we'd have to, for the band we'd have to that figure out the uh, EIRP required to get to the you know spacecraft. So I'm not, I'm not sure why it's hard coded to watts, but yeah, it will, that that it, that, will that closes it. that closes the link. That's accurate. Okay. For a one meter dish and two two watts, that'll that'll get you there. We have this FEC is not the case anymore. Um, so we use a convolutional. I think this meant this was meant to be sequential, and the stance. Yeah, Sumia's uh, suggestion is great. Sumia's suggestion is great. The stance. Uh, this is Reed Solomon, but we so we use yeah, a con yeah. we use a. I, I maybe he meant convolutional here, but so but we use a rate one half convolutional code. We're not we're not concatenating it, on the uplink. Uh, we use a Golay code for for the link um, channel information. Um, that's still accurate. The user rate of five hundred bits per second. And 10 kilohertz, that's we we bump that up. Um, so that's that's going to change. Um, uplink receive FFT to find each user within. I guess this is when that must mean millisecond capable of 100 sequential acquisitions. But that's not how we do it. We use a polyphase filter bank for the uplink receive. Um, so this will this will be changed. Um, I mean, like you can. Sort of, uh, but, but I'll put it in red because this, we will be able to put it differently. Okay, now the downlink, assuming that it's on 24 gigahertz, it's a 10 watt SSPA. Let's see. Oh, and let's see. A diameter of one meter is large, says Sumio. 50 centimeters less is, is desirable. Okay, let's put that down because that's a very, very good point. Thank you. This is now red because. Right. So I, I was saying that if you if you let's say, uh, let's say if, if, fifty centimeters or less goal. Yes, but um, um, usually in VSAT tech terminology, you don't define the TX first. You just say EIRP, 
And that's where then you would then figure out the combination. Well, then you define the antenna dish, which is mm -hmm. 0.5 meter. Then whatever TX is necessary to reach the EIRP subject to the limitations of the beam being formed. Um, yeah, you know, I know. It has to, we're yeah, we're okay. familiar with this process. The 50 centimeter or less goal actually is the one of the baselines that we did for the 5 and 10 gigahertz. So this is just a, uh, this is an adjustment in the link budget. And then we will need more power coming from somewhere. But this downlink here, it's talking about these turbo codes. We actually use DBBS2 and S2X. Um, so we're going to get some coding gain. Um, so we're not, we're not using uh, the same stuff here. Um, any, yeah, some of this is going to be the same. And they're talking about primary user interface is a Codec 2 vocoder. Uh, so we actually use Opus because Codec 2 tops out at, at 3,200 bits per second. And that is not going to give a good voice quality. So we're going to use higher bit rate vocoders. Um, and Opus has, has them all the way up to a ridiculously large number of bits. Um, some of this is going to, th this is over, I think a, a little over constrained. Um, our symbol rate we already know is, is larger than, than three mega, uh, this is mega symbols per second. This is a symbol rate. Uh, so we, we already know for, for, it's going to be closer to eight. Um, and it is a single downlet downlink bitstream. It's a time division multiplexing using DVBS2 S2X. So this will all change, and the numbers for the user and the delivered bit rate will um, go up. So, and it's adaptive coding and modulation, which means that it's not fixed. There's a a, a variety of modulations and a variety of of uh, rates for the code. Uh, and if so, if you are if you have a small dish or if you have pointing error or bad weather, then you will get more coding and you will get a more, you know, you will, you will get, um, uh, it, it will work harder to deliver the bits, but it, the, your bit rate will go down. So this is all, I should probably just make it all red, but I'm, uh, well, I'm, well, I'm pretty, uh, pretty well, confident that we've, we've got uh, all these numbers in the link budget. Yeah, will there be simultaneously different uh, uh, coding rates in use by the hundred people, different people, or uh, when it goes down, everything goes down to a particular uh, level of service? We've talked about that in several times in the past, and what we'll probably start out doing is, um, well, we we could deliver uh, each frame in the downlink could is can be a different uh, mod code. So it, you can actually change this per frame. And so the answer is it depends. There, like the easy way to do it is to lockstep everybody to the worst case station, but that's not really fair. So, yeah. you know, but but starting out, everything is going to be simpler. So that's kind of the nice thing about having an FPGA is that as you figure out how to do things that you can, you upgrade your spacecraft. All right, so this is this is interesting. So here's here's how they were laying out the signal processing. Um, they were using a 15 R3. They're using a uh, so what they call a Kepler GPU. Um, a dual ISP core with the raw processing. Oh, here's some camera sensors. You were asking about cameras, right? Yeah. Look at that. Which is the ship already had the interfaces pinned out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then an advanced display engine. Okay, built on TSMC, twenty-eight nanometer. Yeah, HPM but you, process. you can also get the zinc. I mean, you've got Vivara running, so you could actually get the zinc. Uh, uh, you know, uh, zinc. Uh, you know. Yeah, this this architecture FOCs. will change because we so we have a FPGA based um, design, and that's what we're gonna fly. We're gonna fly a um, a durable FPGA, so this will all look different. So I'm just gonna go ahead and and make it red. <laughs> are you going to are you going to get uh, RTG4 from Actel uh, like Microsemi? We're going to go with Xilinx. Okay. And whatever Xilinx my job, says my, we can my job, use, then we are yeah. going to to use it. it. It's 60 to 80,000. Um, the one that I'm using at mm -hmm. work is 60 to 80,000 and it's horrible. Yep. No problem. <laughs> it's what it is what it is. 
Okay, so here's something I don't know a lot about. This is the PA? Uh, the gallium, gallium nitrate SSPA. It's a 20 year old design right now at this point. Okay, so is it sounds like it was picked. How do we know it can be done? And it was reliable then, and it, and it might be reliable now, but are, is, is this something that needs to change? I can get you the best possible world's greatest possible advisor on this, if you wish. I'll, I can reach oh, out yeah. to him. Yeah, please. And, yeah, please. He, yeah, he'll please. just be, beat the crap out of this spec. Okay, good. Let's let's let somebody that knows RF parts figure it out. Yeah. It's nice to have question, a backup, but uh, yeah, yeah, you're the, saying the, that this is older. Yeah, the real question is that this chip was designed for earth, you know, terminals. I mean, like, ter you know, like not, you know, uh, regular uh, terraforma terminals. So the question is that will this, this, this chip survive in space even more than a month? Oh, okay. I don't know. It, it does. Maybe this part number would be the key to, to answering that question. This might be something that's uh, that's rated. Well, TGA two five nine five. I mean, just I'm curious, but I doubt it. Two five nine five. I mean, see if 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 we have to use it, yeah, it's just a conventional EDVD chip. That's it's not even uh, protected against thermal. Uh, sorry, radiation doses. So if we use it, which is cheap, we got to put a, a good amount of shielding because this thing will okay. will break down over time. Yeah, let's the wafer. then definitely get in touch with somebody that knows this stuff so that we can get a a good recommendation and then i'm just going to leave it in red because yeah i mean we can even we don't need gallium nitrate we can use because we, we're going to be a power surplus so we could just theoretically uh we could uh, use anything that's quote older generation radiation hardened and be yeah. done with it nobody know the difference okay the next even three... even vacuum tubes even vacuum yeah. tubes even vacuum tubes yep the uh the next three slides are all uh uplink and downlink uh transponder like link budgets and all link of this budgets, yeah it's, all of this it's, gets it's re yeah it all gets re revved but you do notice that he put in this is he's referencing boulder colorado at 10 degree elevation angle clouds no rain so the 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 weather models will be important um but the positions that the the you know these uplink references will be in japan or we'll pick a pick a place um and see what happens. I mean, like I said, so the latitude, all of, latitude of Japan and Australia, latitude of Japan and Australia, which is flatter on the horizon, that's what it, what it is. Yeah, well, okay. but but the nice thing about the link budgets from from Jan is that the the weather models are included, and it keys off of your geographical position. It's really nice work. So, so that so but essentially the bottom line here was a hundred users at five kilobits per second each, and there's your margin and. You know, that's probably why it was codec two. Um, you know, that's uh, that's that's very modest, but we will. So we, we there will be lots of adjustments, but you can see where we, what we have to compare to. You can see what the bottom line was. All right, next is the LTU transponder. It is a t okay. So this is telemetry, and I'm guessing control. And what they did is they had a separate radio. So it says, I guess the telemetry downlink was this UHF radio. They're using 9,600 bits uh, BPSK suppressed. Is that it's acting like it's misspelled? Okay, there we go. Um, blah blah blah. So I I don't know. Um, we could certainly use something like this setup for telemetry and control and have it separate from the microwave. What we've kind of assumed with the with five and ten gigahertz design that we've been working on is that the telemetry and control is on those channels as well, that it is not separate. And I know that there's an argument for redundancy, having a completely separate radio for telemetry and control. Um, but uh, the the legal requirement may be now this is not the uh, U.S. mission. Um, if this was U.S., the FCC might say no. You still need to have a way to shut off the transmitter. Mm -hmm. So you, you you need to have a separate channel altogether, nothing to do with your payload. Yeah. Uh, when we when, and so so, but Japan might say, well, we don't care. But I, but I'm just saying that if we just Im implement a simple um, hard coded 
BPSK, like literally right. hard coded, fixed yeah. chip, no FPGA crap, right. just you know modulation one zeros and everything, and just very simple. That might be useful for a variety, just to survive the mission, just so the mission can survive. That's all. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep this in here. I this this is sort of the this is all kind of familiar to to me, and it looks kind of tried and true and. You know, so I'm, yeah, no, I'm gonna, no, I'm I'm just, and, but I'm gonna let people that are that are more expert at that than me um, tell me. Right, and, there's two pages. So, so is there two pages? There might even be any more. Yeah, there's a telemetry link budget and everything. So, so in this section, I want it. You know, if you don't know any any more than I do, then we just skip over it entirely and and get a better review from somebody that knows. I'm kind of inclined to be very conservative with telemetry and control. I, I, there is a faction of people that are very excited about doing it in a modern way, and it's like, well, you know, that we should do it all within the the five and ten. Um, but my my instinct is to be very conservative here and make sure that that if if your fancy digital stuff fails, and then we have a fail over to where it turns into a transponder, and then if that fails too, or if uplink or, or downlink completely fails, uh, we have to be able to to control it, like you said. So I'm just going to leave yeah. this here. Is there so, anything here so, that you would change, though? Is yeah, there anything I would change that's... it. I would, I, would, I would change this. I mean, think about it for a second. UHF, you're sending up UHF because historically UHF is what what within the capability of people. However, UHF antennas are goddamn large compared to uh, yeah. both L and even uh, L is larger than C. Okay, I so would let's... ask the question. Can Okay, possibly new frequencies is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Can we uh, look at a commanding by? Uh, I, I, okay, so I already e. know that we that we may we may not have much of a choice here, just simply because we won't be allocated anything on on some on some frequencies. Like they they may wave us off for. I, I I imagine that that microwave might be easier. Well, the, the the only problem is that if you're got a spacecraft up there and you want to receive the command signal, not transmit, you're going to have to have, I guess, what an L band antenna that's big. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Sumio says, wouldn't it be desirable to transmit telemetry on a frequency with less cosmic noise? Okay, let's. I'm going to write that down. I mean, cosmic noise is in like uh, low low noise, right? Okay. We would like to to have that. So, yeah. Is there any? But it, okay. So aside from the frequencies, is there anything else here that that stands out to you that needs to be changed? I mean, like it would. I mean, well, so, so uh, we're talking about a rate one half sequential over thirty. Okay, uh, I guess sequential must uh, mean convolutional to to Jim. Yeah, I have yeah. to ask him because he's saying, for example, Viterbi, and Viterbi and convolutional kind of go together. And then plus a bot. So, so he's talking about concatenating two codes. That's a standard technique. Um, I, I don't. I, are are, are I the don't know. command station are the command stations going to be uh, proprietary command stations, or do we want everybody to be? Because the, because the choice of command station means that specialized equipment, specialized everything. Because this is a big, serious mission. If we just uh, design for the lowest possible person, any Tom, Dick, and Harry can just get up no, there. No, no, no. I, I can tell you, at least from the, like in the uh, United States way of approaching this, is that every amateur radio operator in that has a license, you know, so all licensees are capable, they're, they're legally capable of being, uh, you know, command station for, for the amateur satellite service, but it's up to the operator. So there will be so a we don't small have to, number we, of we people. Don't have, we, there will be so a small number to, of people and they will be chosen by the operator. Right. So we don't have to comply with VHF or UHF or we can just get any frequency that no, they give I, us. Yeah, we oh. get, what you just said, it, we get any, we take advantage of any frequency that we're given. So, so I think some work needs to be done here to, to make sure that we've got good good picks and there's, yeah. there's very standard you know using the old reliable you know things that work it would is would be very smart and then let's see sumia says at the same time we also want to adopt strong encoding yes so yeah the the rate rate one half 
sequential or um, I'm assuming convolutional code plus a block code that's pretty strong. That's good stuff. Another option that that um, that that we have available to us uh, is low density parity check codes or LDPC, and that's what's used on yeah. DVBS2, S2X, downlink. And so since we already know how to do that, and we already have an encoder and a decoder for that, we may want to consider using uh, our LDPC work instead of using the convolutional uh, block code approach. So we have choices here, and LDPC is a very high performance uh, code. It's great. And or we could go nuts and and implement uh, this stuff in, with the polar code, which is even, you know, even neater. So there's lots of opportunity for strong encoding uh, here, and uh, and good performance. So this is this is a whole system in and of itself, and we'll need lots of good advice for it. All right, this part is a. All right, somebody explain this to me. It's active below 5,000 kilometers. It's an L band to UHF transponder. Okay. I'm not, I, guess uh, this is I, just... I don't have the notes for this. Why would they want to? I mean, they're doing something like if it be, comes below, uh, if this is during the GTO phase, okay. GTO phase, perigee. Yeah, sure. so they're thinking of a of a swing. They're not thinking of a circular 1250 kilometer orbit or a circular 23,000. They're talking about an elliptical up to geo and then comes back around very low and then goes up again. That's what the, the, the GTO, so this whole mission, uh, the, the original base was presented on a basis that you would be deployed from a ge geosynchronous transfer orbit vehicle. Yeah. Yeah. And it would then follow the track of the vehicle, even if the vehicle came down and, and fell, fell down to Earth. But the, the vehicle would place it in always an elliptical orbit, so 5,000 perigee and then 23,000 apogee. That's what this, that's why they needed to, and okay. the Doppler, and, and they thought about Doppler like, well, if they're coming down, we're going to be sweeping very fast. Um, so we'll lose lock, so we need a larger. Uh, oh, wind. okay. All right. That makes sense. I. I'll leave it. But in, in our case, we're going we're to be circular. We don't really care. I mean, okay. we, we're never going to come back. We're so we, there. yeah, the, gotcha. Now we have link budgets again, and yeah, yeah. Here we have. This is all. I think it's all going to be pretty similar, especially if we end up using the exact same design. Um, but all link budgets are going to get reviewed. Um, and then we have a command link budget. It'll these will all be reviewed. This has all of the basic stuff in it. Okay, now we have a page about the this is the Rad FX experiment. This is I I'm pretty sure this is already flown. Because <laughs> yeah. you know, it talks about it's a copy of that being flown in 2015 on on Fox. So yeah, it was tested. Yeah. yeah. The radiation environment, however, for GTO is quite different. So, you know, I'm I'm I think that we are gonna we'll stand down from talking about any particular scientific experiment. We will hold space and we will defer to uh to to Jamsat if they decide that this is worth if we end up with something that they think is worth doing and like it enough and we do a good enough job, then I think We'll defer to to Jamset to pick experiments because uh, it's already flown. It, and it could be that Vanderbilt may have stuff and that they would like to put on here, but I, I, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, Jamset with it's all of their no, but, but Rad FX went above I can't, eight thousand to twelve thousand. I can't hear you. So Rad FX went above eight thousand. Like it crossed the Allen radiation belts at twelve hundred. You're not going to cross the radiation belts. Up to Leo, there's no radiation. 2,000 kilometers is the limit to Leo. I mean, the official definition of Lemos and Leo. So therefore, not much radiation effects. This this would not be applicable. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know, I, I let's keep that in mind and 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 remember that because that's a good point. Um, I'm pretty sure though that that the Jamsat has such good relationships with so many different universities that they yeah they could, there's probably some something. other experiment 
I mean, there's ion, ionic wind experiments, solar weather experiments, but radiation is above 8,000 anyway. So that's where that's where okay. Fox went. Yeah. All right. So here. Okay. So the precipitation attenuation experiment. This this is for 24 gigahertz. Any sort of experiment on the. We have a built-in experiment with adaptive coding and modulation in in the protocol. So it's kind of neat. There's lots of things to be learned. Uh, from from just letting your protocol adapt to the weather, so <laughs> I'm super excited about that. We can that's so in in a sense it doesn't even have to be a separate experiment. We can actually include this as as part of the communications package to say that we can actually give reports, regular reports. People can look at the spacecraft and and look at the essentially the log of all of the users that have that have acquired the spacecraft and used it and we can report all their statistics and and get a pretty good picture of uh of at least 24 gigahertz so so that's the moisture the moisture in the atmosphere basically uh, it, as the as yes, the beam passes through it will greatly affect attenuation which means that the protocol has to adapt and adds uh it either increases or decreases the complexity of the modulation picked yeah or yeah. increases or decreases the rate and there's there's a there's all these different pairs and they cover the entire uh spectrum the signal to noise uh slope uh it's really cool and that's something that that with some work um that could be we could report those that behavior as as it adapts and and delivers your communication and so that we in could itself actually is predict, an experiment. We, we, we we could predict uh cloud cover rain cover we would be able to report actual like yes it in and, and there are some really neat things about weather like the the there there's things that we may be able to report that perhaps radar doesn't really catch yeah radar uh, would only it would give reflections but if we are beaming through the cloud uh -huh. uh, the mass we yeah. would be able to tell them when a storm is forming because of the uh humidity uh, yeah. that we're going to go through Okay. So what I'm going to do is something we haven't done so far. I'm going to put this in blue because I think we can, instead of changing or not doing it or deleting it, this is something we can actually put in as an enhancement. This this can be actually part of the, the main payload. So that's what that's going to stand for. Okay. All right. Are you doing I'm okay doing. For, for time, by the way? We've been at this for like an hour and a half. Does any, anybody need, we only have, we have four more slides, but is, is everybody okay to hang in there for a little longer? You're right. Fine, but I haven't heard from uh, some of you. Well, he's typed, he's typing. He's had I'm, some, I'm some great, cool. great uh, stuff. I just want to make sure everybody's okay. I, I really appreciate the time. I think we, they've done a, a huge amount here. Um, Okay, so here's more about the precipitation attenuation experiment. Let's see. Yeah, we can do way better than this. We can we can yeah, actually I, I, we can I, I'd like to I'd like to um I'd like to add a line to this. Okay. Let me let me hear it. Okay. Um uh okay, it's important. Just don't don't jump out of your seat when I'm saying this. Um secondary experiment of this system, this exact system, as delivering wireless power. So experiment number one, experiment number two, that's it. Simple as that. Just a CW carrier, you know, yeah. whatever best possible can, use case. You'll be able to tell from the link budget how well that will work. <laughs> Which is exactly what the question is, because everybody yeah. and their mother, brothers and cousins is talking and I'm working on something. So I'm just yeah. saying it's it's a, it's going to be advantage. well, we'll we'll run the numbers. I'll, I'll put it in there, you know, but it's uh, yeah. So so the answer is yes, uh, but but be prepared for very modest numbers. Ah, and look where we are at. We're at the Pulse Plasma Thruster from George Washington University. Yeah. All okay. right. Do you so have any I comments just, uh... here? Yeah, can I um, just uh, um, uh, get permission to broadcast a few pictures? Yeah, sure. I think you should be able to. Do I have to stop? Oh, let me save my work first before I do anything silly. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I, I can... just want to share. All right, I will stop and this go This is ahead. not a picture of a thruster. This is not a picture of a thruster. Sorry, it's a picture <laughs> of a roof rack. Yeah. Okay, sorry. It's embarrassing, okay? Like, okay, fine. All right. Um, 
Okay, uh, for for uh, probably uh, I don't know who AC is, is but uh, uh, hello AC and uh, oh Sunil. hi AC, welcome AC. All right, everyone's welcome. Uh, Great, go ahead. Okay. Um, well, this is actually uh, that that 2014 slide that was originally sent out and everything. At that point, I was in the lab. Uh, I was returning back from a small set, but this was actually come out of the lab at well, the same week. So this went up to space on Bricksat. Uh, P and uh, basically um, the system itself uh, is uh, quite interesting architecture. There's a lot of empty space because uh, I didn't really didn't have that many parts to begin with, and then the 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 board design was so old and clunky. There were some fixed corners that I had to you know design. So I kind of used these for test points. I used these for umbilical cables. I used uh, I, I basically wasted space, but there was this whole section. Uh, on the where my mouse is, I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it was just empty. It was not doing anything. So on the other side, um, there were uh, definitely um, uh, uh, you know some interesting gadgets and widgets, and I'd like to show it to you. Hang on a second. I'm just going to switch. Um, gonna, there we go. On the other side, this is a 250 megahertz uh, system on module computer. It's a cold fire CPU, extremely rugged, extremely reliable. Has flown many times. Uh, I mean, for me, but you pop it out and you just program it and you pop it back in, or you just do an in, in circuit serial uh, bit of flash. And it has 52 input output pins and it's got complete real time control and real time operating system. And it's fully licensed and fully functional. And here we have a, a set of uh, opto coupler relays powering, um, you know, uh, solid state switches. So pretty much uh, 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 they they can power power full circuits, but this is where the algorithm lived that I was working on, and that algorithm is the subject of the patent itself. However, okay. is this the same however, patent that that we're yeah, yeah working on? Um, okay, yeah, yeah. So the code I can, I'm going to give to anybody who wants to do it. But what happened was that um, sometime in the past, um, immediately after that, um, the um, Sorry, I'm just trying to find out. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, what happened was that the professor basically, uh, you know, took all my work. And as I was testing this and, and fine tuning the algorithm, he actually went and said yes before he said no, before I said no. And his word was God. So he actually agreed in concept that we would rearrange the board components to create this system. And I'm going to now switch to a different picture. That's a different project called the Cannibal project. And the Cannibal project was basically uh, the uh, evil twin of this thing. This is Cannibal project in, 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 in uh, you know, construction. So this is us with NASA supervision. It looks totally different, but it's the same things, but folded uh, into, uh, folded into, uh, you know, like, uh, you know, different structures. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you that in our new system, we can use high levels of integration and high levels of board to board connectivity and uh, you know different layout supports in order to accommodate other things like battery packs and everything that 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 technology uh, you know is is yeah. now possible because of cell phone technology but yeah. really what happens is that when you are given all the parts you can literally allocate a corner of the spacecraft for propulsion module check or or you know attitude module check this this was designed with a hole in the middle to accommodate somebody's uh idea of a reaction wheel system and i was under itar obligation i could not see what they did and they could yeah. not see what i did right but you so had, this was you a had case to make a hole i had to make a hole and <laughs> I, how do i make a hole that does what and i was just given the <laughs> General blogger and like, okay, well, anyway, but what I'm trying to say is that this was four engines uh, that could be used for ACS and attitude cool. uh, okay. orbit, orbit, you know, far, four at a time, you know, and, and the modes were literally uh, idle, standby, run, fire. And yeah. you better, if you're at run, you better fire or you're going to melt your PC board. Yeah. Okay. Because you're generating so much, you know, energy. 40 amps, 40 amps at 250 microseconds. Uh, 30 volts. That's it. So that's why I was saying that when the capacitor bank that we're playing with, if nowadays instead of a battery, a heavy darn battery, if we just charge the capacitor for a, a glimpse of the sun, we can do it. Okay. 
lighter and so, we can do fire faster. This, so this is what we need to prototype coming up. Like the this is sure. this I is mean, the this is the roadmap that you're preparing. I, I've I've got all the I've got everything. Anybody who wants it, uh, they can just print a co another copy, or we can just edit it. It's in Eagle. It, it'll work in Eagle. I did Eagle professional. Yeah, we can actually straight publish the Eagle stuff to the repository. I think we should do. Don't pick or choose. We should publish everything as soon as possible, and then if anybody yeah. really wants to convert it or update it, then they can. Then they have the original. Yeah, yeah. Now we don't let's... need any fancy stuff. I mean, this is all like I. I even made this uh, stupid. Uh, you know, I made this uh, coil. I mean, uh, basically, like my back. <laughs> it's like it's it's like okay. All it right, is a okay, little but... rough looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And 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 I'm just saying that. I'm just saying that if you if you look at the other one, which was sorry, if you look at the you know better ones as I as I call them, because uh, these yeah. were see that capacitor that's yeah. actually literally sitting because I I, I had to route the high current wires because yeah. they're four layers and five layers, and that's this is a one point two kilowatt IGBT. This thing will burn the hell out of anybody if anybody is even remotely touching it. Yeah, I mean, because it will, it, it's 1200 volts, uh, you know, switching capability. Well, great. Let's, let's put a transmitter on the other end of it. We, we right. could hold Yeah, it. that's, this is what we need to demonstrate as soon as we can and to show that it is compatible and that we have a way to, to make everything cooperate. Okay. I mean, I, I, I can, I mean, once, once people are interested to see the rest of it, um, you know, then we can, uh, we can, uh, people you know, are really already, they're already interested and we yeah. need to go ahead and publish it and that will create even more interest. And what's more, more funnier is that this, the stuff went up with my, uh, labels and I don't know, you can't see it. I, I can't find the photo, but it's a sharper picture exists with my call sign and all that and everything and my family's name and my dog's name and everything. So nobody knows that I put it on the keyboard. Very good. Okay. All right. Okay. But that's awesome. whatever it is, I mean, all of this was homebrew. All yeah. right. Student working yeah. for peanuts. So we should, pizza. we should be able to get back to this, at least this level and, and beyond really. Yeah. Within, within two months, within two months or three months. I mean, it's just a question okay. of sitting back and like, everything is still available. Everything is still available. There's nothing that has been obsoleted, and uh, the code is still running. I, I run it on my test bench all the time. Uh, we could adapt the code if you want. We can say we're at TRL level eight, so that's the maturity of the system. Okay. And so this has shock and vibe and all that very well. Good. Then you you do not wait. Okay. Don't hold back. Don't wait. Don't wait for somebody to ask you. You know, we move forward by. Pub if we can publish everything, we publish everything. We yeah, have to. That's, that's, what I was gonna, that's, yeah. that's how that's how we're able to exist. Um, right. So if you're if you're hanging around waiting for someone to be interested, you already have a huge amount of interest. We already we're, we're trying very hard to raise the funds with our little summer fundraiser, and right. we've, we're moving forward on that. And and well, do we, we want to waste uh, any time in making any? Uh, see, the, the thing is that to get qualification, you know, process started and to transfer the knowledge, we, I can start redesigning. I, I can start, you know, um, refreshing the designs, you know, tweaking it here and there and everything uh, yes. for current things. Like like this correction, I'll, I'll, I I know yeah. I, I fixed it. In the, <laughs> I mean, well, trust no, it's, me. It's, I, I, it's I, kind of cute, you know. I mean, what is what is a prototype without a blue wire, you know? We're without a, a, a blooper, basically. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, this, this, by the way, this is the day before, this is the day before I handed her, it, it's the day of the photograph. It, it went up there and we, it, 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 it was the working fix to everything. Cool. But really the thing is that, um, the key is that if I keep the module consistent, it's only 40 bucks. Okay. 40 bucks for a complete computer and everything. It can theoretically be a flight computer. Okay. 40 bucks. Not bad. All right. So yes, please start. Just please proceed. Because I, it's, okay, well, this is critical stuff, and it'll, you know, if we don't get the propulsion done right, then um, and down, down well, cold, if we, if then we nothing want else a little happens. bit of, uh, if we want sparks to fly, then some some board will have to be made one of these days. We, I, I can drive today. Up. Let's start now. Let's create boards. You know, it. These are these are boards that that we need to to uh, that we that okay. we need working. You know, and do they have to be? I'm going to say like whatever you've got, um, let's, 
let's go ahead and and get fresh ones and and then proceed as quickly as we can. Uh, yeah, no, 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 they'll work. They'll work. There's plenty of space available on the boards, even in the current picture that you're seeing. And trust me, I designed it. I know how much space I left inside because later I just was lazy enough and I just put a lot of traces everywhere. And just okay. Well then, it. It just, let's it, it doesn't mean that much. then let's get started. Okay. All right. Well, at least we have some high TRL components that we could utilize. That's right. You know, as a base. Okay. And uh, we have a, have we have like do... two more slides. You want to bang through yeah, the please. Those? Sure. Okay. Done. Please. No, thank thank you very much. I think this is actually a it's so critical that um, uh, you know, back uh, it was about seven or eight months ago when we had our last um, te technological or TAC. We had like a TAC meeting, um, you know, uh, uh, advisory committee, techn technical advisory committee meeting for ORI. And at that meeting, um, Jan King talked about forty seven. Gigahertz in particular, because it's a band that we no, have. because the chips. Uh, no, because uh, the, the, the uh, analog called me, or the yeah, analog devices they now own linear, but they called me on this issue because I was the idiot who took their uh, LTM series to space. So forty-seven gigahertz is the chip that they want us to do something, and I, I would love. Oh, to, good. Yeah. Know. So yeah, forty-seven gigahertz is really really awesome for us because we're that's our primary. We're primary on that band. Oh, somebody is uh, something talk, in uh, there's something uh, in chat. Yeah, the question. Yeah. Sorry. I wasn't looking at the sorry, can't oh can't get my mic to work in this ancient laptop. Will you cite link for the Oh absolutely. Yes. Uh the the this uh all of the meetings that we have like this are recorded and um will be published to the uh to ORI's YouTube account. Uh so that, that we Okay, so um in this slide what we need to add in is um, oh, sorry. Hang on. I would, uh, let me answer AC and then and then tell him that yes, the, not in addition to the video, then there will be all this like this document. All the revisions of this document will be published in our repo, and any other uh, documentation or uh, the lists of things to do probably in Trello. So the answer is is yes. Okay. Sorry. Back to you. Shemander. Okay. So it won't it won't be four thrusters. It'll be an array of thrusters at different points, different configuration. Because we're going to do orbit adjustment. Yeah, oh, it says four at the slide. bottom. Okay, gotcha. In, okay. Those, in those days, in those days, the algorithms were, you know, just tuned to just four because hey, that's what we figured out. But I, I'm I'm very comfortable with arrays. Okay, okay, so it won't be George Washington University because there are many more derivatives of the of the microcat now. Yeah, that and we could utilize. So we just want to canvas anybody. Hey, who got thrusters that are high TRL? Okay. Let's talk. And it, should they, I change? Should I change this to EP as well? Yes. Like it. Okay. Yes. EP and not even MuCat. MuCat is now. No, it, it's, gotcha. Uh, Thank you. Few years old. Okay, and also and, uh, like and, like just let's just, so we just say EP and not GW. Right. But however, okay. the patent we the offer of the patent is important. We yeah. Been let's given let's, the, let's include that like as the first item because i think it's yeah so utilizing a synchronization system uh um uh you know uh, you know, uh, you know uh, synchronization system um given by not given but uh, you know uh offered by gw they yeah. offered it they did so we're clean we're good to go on that and they'll be happy that something is happening with their stuff okay so everywhere where it says MuCat or MicroCat strike. Yeah, that's good. yeah, yeah. Micro is it? Is this? Should I strike this whole point? Yeah, just call it vacuum arc thruster at this point. Anything just call it EP is just vacuum arc thruster vacuum Oops. VAT. Okay, so um, uh, I would say uh, vacuum arc. Uh, just say micro cataract thruster. Micro uh, just get rid of the, that phrase okay. micro cataract thruster and just call it VAT. V A T, like vacuum that. Vacuum thruster. Just call it vacuum arc thruster. Okay, is that good? Yeah. And then micro propulsion. It doesn't yes, like that, that but that's I think that's. Like, it, it came in lab. Yeah. Okay. The, 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 yeah, we did it everything. And, and flew think... on and flew on uh, Canivel, uh flew on Brickset P twenty fifteen and Canivel X twenty eighteen. Okay. If you don't mind, at, at that paragraph. In this paragraph. Uh, sorry. Second paragraph. Second, second paragraph. paragraph. Okay, this this one here. I'm sorry, can't. Uh, where's I, the mouse? I, yeah, at the end of it. 
at, at the, the end, end of it. it. Okay. Yes, uh, TRL-8, NASA TRL-8. NASA TRL-8. Okay. TRL-8, flight hardware. Ah. Flight hardware. Uh, 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 tested on orbit. Um, tested on orbit. Um, Bricksat dash P B R I C A. Uh, Sorry, there's a huge amount of lag for typing on something okay. that's being shared, so that's why it's so clumsy. Okay, yeah, tested zoom on... touch. Tested on orbit. Okay. On um, uh, Brick B R I C S A T Bricksat dash P dash P. I know. Twenty fifteen. Yeah, again, it's a uh, it's a lot of lag. <laughs> so okay, it's... <laughs> sorry. Twenty fifteen. <laughs> And Cannibal dash X. Cannibal? C A N C A N Y V A L. Like that? No, no E. Get rid of the E okay. at the end. Like that? That's it, yeah. Cannibal L X twenty eighteen. Okay. Cool. Yep. That's good. Okay. And then Two mission critical Parity phases. Parity raising, maintenance, and mission turn. No, uh, add the um, the third. Uh, the, the, we need orbit adjustment. Was it adjustment? Okay. Orbit adjustment, yes. Orbit adjustment. And here I'm referring to the fact that we need to change planes and all the, do all the fun stuff to get into the correct uh, phase, uh, okay. the uh, correct uh, plane of the orbit. Yeah. And this, I think this needs to be Reviewed. Yeah, red, red. Let's put that in red, and then I'm going to put the whole thing. That'll all fall yeah. out of the. Yeah, and and depending on how many years we want to fly, uh, at 1250, I mean, given drag, we're we're going to have to do a link. We have to do a estimate of the total, you know, you know, delta v that we need. Okay. Now for the final, oh, are, uh, AC asks, are these xenon or argon ion no, thrusters? No, no, these are just uh, metallic vapor vacuum arc thrusters, pure, pure and simple, a positive and negative terminal, which are going to be uh, excited with a, a, a brief, um, high current, very low voltage uh, uh, arc. Is there uh, anything that, you heard you, that, oh, sorry. Pardon me. No, I don't know if he heard that. Oh, well, I, if he if he needs to know any more, then I, um, or I'm assuming it's a he. I apologize if I have it wrong. Um, but if that's okay, then. Uh, yeah, but we'll it, get, there's we'll no get gases, an additional. There's no, yeah, there's no gases involved. It's just pure and simple solid state material, solid uh, material, solid terminals, and pretty much a spark plug in space. So, yes, he okay. <laughs> Thank you. And so, metal ion? Question mark. Well, okay. Uh, positive terminal being called anode, negative terminal being called the cathode. The the arc is created in a make and break scenario, which means that it's not continuous. It's just like you know, it makes it breaks it, makes it breaks it, makes it breaks it. But at the point of where it touches, that spot is instantaneously heated up, uh, liquefied, vaporized ionized and we're assuming here a semiconductor of some kind or a, or a conductor of some kind for the cathode terminal but what happens is that that, that metal metal vapor gets converted into or elevated to plasma state and then it's self ex self um uh, uh self electric field and self magnetic field interact and it actually accelerates because of the uh the the interaction of the negative J cross B and it's out the door at 20 kilometers per second. Oh, you see, it's got it, thanks. All right, and then well, okay. I went ahead and put the, the Pulse plasma thruster uh, and yes. Yeah, and, and, and we, we'll we have to write the words that don't stand behind the thruster when it's testing, do not <laughs> do that. You're gonna be coated with high energy uh, uh, ions and electrons. I mean, basically ions, it's gonna coat you. Which means that it, if you ever wanted to code something in copper or or titanium yeah. or gold or whatever, yep, this. By the way, Kader made more money with this, uh, and I, I hats off to him with this with the derivative of this technology. So okay, we yeah. give up. I hear you. 
All I right. tell you, biomedical engineers. Yeah. <laughs> All right, last slide. Looks like this is um I think this is this is an ex, is this an experiment? Well, it's useful. Is it one of the experiments though or is this it's no, just, I, I don't know no, why. No, okay, there. this I is mean... just a this is is a teledyne total integrated dose device will be flown to continuously monitor the in-flight cumulative dose. Unit you know, selected is a wide range of dose rates. Well, it looks small enough. I mean, I guess that's pretty neat. Interface to the spacecraft via A to D and I squared C to limit right. bus. I mean, so that we know, output. yeah, I would like to know it. I mean, I, I would like yeah. to really know it in terms of or whatever. What, are we passing through, you know, radiation clouds or something? Yeah, yeah, this is neat. I think we keep it. I mean, yeah. look, it's it's not it's not a like a whole U to do this, so uh, it's it's pretty cool. All right, that is the that's the deck. We've been at it for for two hours, so. I think it might be a good stopping point, um, but let's go ahead and and go around to to let everybody um, maybe add some if they think of any action items or any overall concerns or anything at all that we can put on the list of things to do. Now is a good time. Um, so just wind down with a with a concluding action item. I suppose that's the. That's what I'd like to hear. Anything, anything bugging you? Anything that stood out? Uh, second thoughts about anything? Uh, overall impressions. So, what do you think, Shamantra? Perhaps AC can, uh, you know, uh, just introduce uh, him or herself, please. Himself. Yes. Okay. He Over to AC. Oh, it said his uh, microphone not working, and and um, I'm sure he'll catch up and and type, uh, maybe a little more, um, if given if he has if he has the chance. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, Sumio, is there anything that you would advise us? Is there any advice that you have for us, or anything, any other action items that we need to take care of? Okay, Sumio says, okay, no additional one. Okay, and but Sumio, if there is anything that you can think of um, or in, anything um, that would help us uh, or, or any anybody that we should talk to, uh, just let me know and I'll do my very best. Uh, we'd really like to make a good presentation uh, for, for you and your wonderful club. No, and eight, AC says, uh, just interested in satcoms, uh, not an expert. Uh, well, you're in the right place. You do not have to be an expert to to join up. You just have to willing be willing to become more of one along the way. And he gives us calls, KJ6GYC. Yeah, I'm, I'm N3RDX, um, which I don't think, uh, I think I think I wrote it somewhere in my call center. Um, one mm -hmm. thing, uh, Michelle, uh, I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to actually say that part of the the work of proposing is to give the, the confidence that we can execute a complex project like this, you know, even if it's part of somebody else's mission. But if we don't have the word systems engineering or space systems engineering somewhere in our presentation, then kind of people, you know, might think it's just an amateur, but, but really what we're doing is systems engineering. We just got to say that we're going to do space system engineering because it's a, it's a set of practices. It's not a given spreadsheet. It's actually a set of practices that take the whole design and, and then propose a framework to execute it, which you've been already doing. So you might as well, just make sure that it says somewhere in the in the thing in the introduction. Yeah, but there is we, a, a there's a space mission analysis uh, and design handbook, which everybody is a Bible. It's the red book, and there's a chapter in which a very interesting fire site is decomposed into a page. That's it. That that is the top level page. Could be the introduction to the presentation. Yeah, the what I have here in this slide deck um, is only part of the presentation from 2014. So there could have been um, some other other papers or, or and what, what undoubtedly happened was it was put up on the screen and 
the yeah. the several people that were that gave this that helped give this presentation mainly i believe it was uh, so jan king and and others um then spoke you know and if we had a recording that'd be pretty cool um yeah. so we we do have uh, a, a pretty healthy amount of of systems engineering competence and expertise uh, all across ORI, and we have a number of people who are either currently employed professionally in yeah. aerospace uh, with lots of different comms people, you know, a variety of people. We do have some things, there are some things like, for instance, uh, you saw here, thermal was one was one slide and it was blank. Um, and we have a similar problem in that we don't have uh, thermal experts. So um, we're gonna need help from every, from lots of different places. And we do have help and we have several organizations that are interested in, in assisting. So as we unroll this, um, what might be kind of a different experience is that we're we're doing this in public. So we are, we are having these meetings that all we are publishing everything. We are going to have to uh, rewind some things that we decide that will inevitably happen. Um, so I guess the only advice I have is to to be you know to, to embrace uh, open a process. Uh, so it's not just open source, but also an open process. Uh, so so there may be some discomfort along the way, especially if you if we really don't know something, and that's that's okay. The expertise and the the systems engineering you know uh, sort of street cred comes after the hard work that we have have already done and so far with our comm stuff at ORI and and the work that we're going to be doing. So I, I, I take your comment to heart and I, I think that the expertise will, will show through. Sure, just one last suggestion. It just struck me that you already have, uh, in, if you go back to the original slide of the original picture 2014 vintage of the antennas on the spacecraft. Yeah, let's see where that was. Okay, so this if one? we're at twelve fifty, yeah, if we're at twelve fifty kilometers, and we've got a omni antenna at one, it's an L band omni antenna. Let's say theoretically, that's what we have. Assuming that we can, you know, improve the antenna radiation, uh, pro, uh, antenna beam width characteristics and everything, because we're going to maintain attitude facing uh, the, the 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 patch antennas are going to be facing Earth. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the whole point. We could theoretically propose that certain times we could be the relay for future CubeSat missions who need to downlink data fast and they're out of the range of the ground station, but they're in the range of a higher flying orbit. We'd be at mini Tedris tracking a data relay satellite. We okay. would take it and we would send it back. Keep it in mind. We might be able okay. to pull that off and we'll, All right. we'll let the operator uh, decide how much risk they want to take. All right, and there was one more question from, from AC. Any optical spectral observations regarding atmospheric gases or pollutants? Well, a sensor, I, I, what I mentioned, a sensor, basically, mm -hmm. a sensor yeah. with wavelength. Yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, if it's pointing towards the Earth, the middle section of that uh, face, the zenith, uh, the, uh, uh, zenith face, yeah. would be what the sensor would be. That would be kind of cool because it's a it's a sort of a classic technique, at least in machine learning, um, which uh, Thomas might might actually be able to um, to to speak to this. Um, yes, yes. I mean, that I, 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 that's why the, I wanted to bring him along because he has the 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 recent knowledge of as of this semester. He did his all bachelor's into the master's, but, he, but yes, that that would give him the science payload. He would yeah. be a scientist. Yeah, it's it's a it's a really since the essentially sensor fusion to to look at optical, you know, optical spectral observations re regarding the the thing that makes twenty four gigahertz interesting, the moisture in the atmosphere. So you would have the radio itself as a sensor, and then if you combined that with a a spectral observation, who knows what you might find. Uh, we you are did finding IR, out all you, sorts you, of stuff all the time. I mean, this is, I think it's an excellent idea. Uh, you get UV sensors, uh, very cheaply UV and IR at different, you know, resolutions, of course. But yeah, the answer is with that face, which is 10, uh, this is a 6 year, right? So it's 30 by 20 by 10. So that is a 10 by 20 aperture, literally, that we could utilize. I mean, of course, minus the area required for the horn antennas. 
but still there's a possibility that we could actually pop out a like a big whatever sensor and we could do it we we could do it okay I, now i put it in a kind of a clumsy way because every time it, i hit carriage return it wants to capitalize the next line but i wanted to capture the the point uh, he uh, says, polar uh, orbit, uh, no this would not be a polar orbit as much as it would be a um i mean since we're powered we set our orbit where we're going to try to cover japan latitude and australia latitude and i just checked the latitudes they're the same so therefore if we just cover japan to australia we're good to go okay. we cover the rest of the world thanks cool okay uh any last comments from anybody before we we close um do we have to speak japanese to figure out the commands to the spacecraft that's my question you know we we will have all sorts of help with that but no, okay. we will not have to do anything that we are um, incapable of doing. I encourage <laughs> anybody that wants to to try to learn some Japanese. This is an excellent opportunity. Um, but no, you, you don't have to. Yeah, I think we're we've made some yeah. good, good progress here. Okay, good, we got good. work cut out for us. Uh, and what I've done is I've signed us up for the September uh, QSO today uh, as a presentation about this project. So that gives those of us that like to sign up for these sorts of things a big fat deadline. Uh, that'll be in mid-September and uh, looking forward to it. That will, so that will focus the mind and we will, um, I'll try to pull together as many people as possible to update it. And then at that, it's a, it's a really nice show. If you have not attended QSO today, a ham expo, it's virtual only. So it's a, it's an online, um, experience and it's a lots of different talks, uh, places to to circulate and meet people and a, an international crowd. So a lot of different countries uh, represented every year in the statistics. Um, so when we present, we will do something uh, similar, not not as long, uh, but we will show walk through the presentation. Uh, we get a, an hour long slot. Most talks are about 25 minutes, and then the rest is Q&A. So it's an extended Q&A session. So what I think we will do is give a, a general overview of what we're trying to 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 um, to attempt here with this proposal, and then pick out some aspects, uh, maybe just one or two, and really go go into the detail. I would I would my feeling is that we should attack uh, propulsion uh, because because we have your time and talent and we have the the patent and we and that we have to get the propulsion in order um and so that's kind of my feeling about about what we should do in terms of uh, really leveraging the event so since the schedule is is kind of announced in advance and we can make it very clear that we are looking for sort of an interactive please bring your q a and your advice comment and critique welcome you know and uh you know that's what we'll we'll have in by mid September. So I think that will that will help us improve this. So be prepared to to start start doing stuff. It'd be really great if we could uh, have some some results to share by September. Let's see. I'm a molecular biologist with a oh, wish a bio experiment would be included. Well, so I can't share a lot, but we do have a a company um, a group that that we are um, collaborating with that does biological experiments in space. So we are uh, very excited about it. I hope it all works. Um, and and th there eventually will be uh, more public opportunities as soon as, as that moves forward. So um, so please keep your, keep listening for, <laughs> for that as Ellen. I, I'll be able to announce all that as, as soon as possible if it all, all works out. So there, there are opportunities and the uh, and 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 there are some uh, some potential uh, places that we can have um, it, you know more more activity for for biological stuff. So it's very exciting. That's all I can say. Uh, but but it's uh, it exists and um, and we're helping. And yeah, if, if we have right. if we have room and if if Jamset was willing, then then um you know I'm I'm sure uh, there there has to be somebody that would be interested in that. Okay. Uh, when will you hear back from a gem set then? Um, uh, oh. well, well, not before we finish this pre presentation yeah, to them, right? We, okay. I don't know. Uh, I don't have a schedule or any expectations. 
Um, and they they could they could uh, send it back to us and say it needs more work, or they could say it's not the direction we want to go, or they could say we love it yeah. and we want to move forward, and we okay. we will gratefully and graciously accept any feedback and and whatever decision uh, they give us. So right. I don't have a schedule okay. for that, but I'm I suspect that the answer would be pretty quick. Sure. Great. Thanks very much, uh, Michelle. Um, oh, sure and, sure uh, thing. AC yeah. No, thank you for your time. This has been great. And I'm I'm looking forward to um for to to talking with Thomas again. I hope he's interested in in being part of it. Yeah. I'll give him feedback and I'll ask him to pass your pass his email to you. Okay. Thank so, you. Uh, thank you so much. Sumio, thanks very much. Thank you very much. Uh, um, thank yeah. You thank you, Sumio. Yeah. Bye. Right. Bye. 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 See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you.